uh, full moon circle. And this is our first full moon, yay, that we will be celebrating together here in this group. And of course, it's hosted by me, Ashante Fernandes of Gemini Holistics. And what we'll be doing today is I'll be taking you on a brief little journey through some of the concepts and ideas of the energy that are going on right now that I'll be sharing with you guys. And hopefully it'll inspire you to create more consistent uh, full moon rituals, ceremonies, and acknowledgments into your own spiritual life, as well as support you guys with some understanding of what the astrological energies are that are affecting you right now, as well as some of the information that you'll get through these astrological energies, which I know can be tough for some of us, especially those who, of us who have spiritual gifts and those of us who are also empathic. This can be a challenging time during the month. Although it may be beautiful and powerful, sometimes it can be a little challenging. So that's why we started this group. And this group is really going to be geared towards assisting anyone who needs that extra oomph and, you know, informing us on how we can utilize this powerful energy for our best benefit, okay? So let's take a quick look into what the astrological energy is right now. Uh, the astrological, astrological energy is basically going to be where the planets are and how these planetary shifts are influencing each and every one of us. I'm sure you guys have heard the term loony or, um, you know, referring to somebody who's, you know, not all the way sane. And I'm sure you guys have observed the patterns around you that sometimes around the full moon, people get a little cray cry. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Really, what I want to show you guys is some of the astrological influences that you can utilize for your benefit, or if you're unaware of, sometimes you can be uh, moved into the negative um, aspects of how these things can affect you. But overall, what I really aim to do is to educate you guys, making sure that you're aware of the major astrological events and how they'll affect things like business, career, emotions, relationships, and even magical undertakings, but do it from a positive perspective where I'm empowering you to use these energies for your highest good and your highest benefit. All right. So we are in the full moon in Gemini. And the full moon in Gemini is a combination of two major events. So first we have the full moon which in and of itself will always comprise of one major component. And that component is the sun is directly in opposition or the opposite sign of where the sun is, okay? And during this uh, time period, it's, that's why there's almost like a source of contention kind of coming around. And that's why sometimes people's moods are kind of influenced in a certain type of way. It is a, it's not always a comfortable energy, depending on the different transits and things that are going on astrologically. It's not always a comfortable energy to experience, especially the more emotionally connected you are and the more empathic you are. But an example of this uh, type of energy would be if, you know, the sun's in Aries, which is a first sign of zodiac. If the sun is in Aries, then the moon would be in Libra, which is the sixth sign of the zodiac. So the reflective opposite is the exact opposite sign. So if you were looking at a zodiac wheel, it would be whatever sign you're in, that exact direct 180 uh, proportion of that. Okay, so the second thing that's happening is the full illumination of the actual lunar body known as the moon, which is in the sky. And that's when we call the moon full. That's basic earth science. So most of the time when the moon is at its fullest capacity, it'll last for two to three days. Um, and you guys will feel that energy magically and mystically you'll feel the ramifications of that energy for approximately three to four days. So 
you know, some people like myself, I'll start feeling it five days before <laughs> it even comes up. So that's one of the highest present astrological energies that we have going on right now. Um, the next astrological energy that's going on is Mercury is in retrograde. And that's significant because Gemini and Virgo are ruled by the planet of Mercury. So if the full moon is in Gemini, <laughs> you're dealing with the mercurial energy. And then there is some retrograding going on with the mercurial energy at this time. So it's important that to look at that because these are going to amplify the effects of the full moon. And it's also going to bring up and amplify the effects of that particular retrograde. So they're kind of playing into each other. Um, and so don't be afraid of Mercury and retrograde. Not all of the effects of Mercury and retrograde are negative, although I know a lot of people like to feed into it like that. <laughs> they're like, oh no, Mercury's in retrograde. What are we going to do? Um, that's not necessarily always a bad thing. Um, there's a lot of positive things that you can get done magically. There's a lot of positive things that you can get done in your personal life, emotionally, mentally, in these retrogrades. So don't feel like retrogrades are always a horrible thing. You know, a lot of people on the internet are kind of given misinformation when it comes to the retrograde, although it's not a comfortable experience, just like the full moon can be a non-comfortable experience at times. It doesn't mean it's not powerful. And it doesn't mean we can't utilize that for our highest good, right? Okay, so the next astrological energy that we have going on is Jupiter in Sagittarius. So Jupiter is the planet of expansion and abundance, and it's going into its native sign of Sagittarius. So this is going to affect each of us differently depending on where the aspects are in our natal chart. So basically where your houses are positioned, what transits are going on in those houses. Again, like I said, I'm not an astrologer. I just follow all of the forecasts because I utilize a lot of this um, energy into my energy work. And also I'm an empath and I'm affected by this stuff. And I got tired of being like, what the what in the world is going on <laughs> every time a transit would happen i would feel it like i said internally and spiritually and then i'd have no clue what was going on so i started really paying attention to the different things that were going on in the planets and in the heavens and then understanding how they were affecting me okay so like i said it's gonna affect each of us differently but one thing is for sure basically throughout this next about a year and a half probably two years we're gonna be experiencing some sort of upswing um in expansion in one of the areas of our lives so it's positive that jupiter goes into its native sign of sagittarius um because jupiter rules over things like career um but like life path careers abundance um, it rules over, you know, how you teach, how you're taught things in a positive aspect. So there's a lot of amazing energy also going on at the same time. That's why I said, you know, be leery of the fear mongering of it all. <laughs> oh my God, it's the retrograde. You know, retrogrades happen just like in life. Everything has its purpose, has its reason. Um, so, you know, there's some beautiful energies arriving simultaneously at this time as well. All right. So let's move forward. So as most of you know, I am a crystal healer as well as a Reiki a master. I also am a professional herbalist. I'm also a spiritual herbalist. Um, and I'm a reader, so I do a little bit of everything. <laughs> I, and I'm a Gemini, thus the concept Gemini, uh, excuse me, Gemini holistic. Um, so, you know, it all makes sense. And as Geminis, we tend to be jacks of all trades. So I'm going to give you guys some crystals and herbs 
for this sign of Gemini, as well as some of the other planetary influences that we're going to be experiencing over this time. So crystals and herbs are ruled by planetary influences and even resonate with specific signs. As a practitioner, when you choose to align not only the properties of the herbs and crystals with any of your undertakings, but the planetary, mm, the planetary and astrological energy as well, you're be beginning to create a template for very powerful works. Even if the work is simple by nature, by aligning these energies, you can see the amplifications in its manifestation power and results. For example, if I'm doing a simple chime candle spell to increase healing by using the planetary influences of Jupiter or Mercury or the sign of Virgo, you can help to manifest abundance and expansion in the areas of health. So simple tweaks like adding crystals and herbs that reflect these correspondences will add extra power to the work that you do. One of the key words that I would like to highlight for you guys is the concept of correspondence. This is one of the universal laws of hermetics. So if anybody has studied the universal laws or hermeticism, which goes all the way back into ancient Kemet, um, these particular laws are some of the uh, things that govern the universe, okay? And as these particular laws govern the universe, they assist us within any undertaking that we do. So by utilizing the law of correspondence in this way, when you build out your undertakings or your magical works, you're going to be doing so utilizing one of the main ways in which the universe works, okay? So some of the crystals for Gemini are as follows. We have aquamarine, the aquatic healer, and the restoration of communication. Um, aquamarine can help you to find your message and share it with the world. Citrine, citrine is a powerhouse and transformer. Citrine literally takes negative energy and turns it into prosperity. Chrysocola, the beautiful healer, when times of hardship come, as they often will, Chrysocola will help you stand steadfast and heal the parts of you that become broken. Some other uh, Gemini crystals that I would like to mention are Tiger's Eye, Apophyllite, and Tourmaline. So there are more than these crystals, but these are some of the crystals that I specifically have worked with, like to work with, and love. And know that they, you know, encompass a high vibrational energy within that sign. So let's get into some planetary herbs that are also resonating at this time. So I'm going to give you a list of Gemini herbs, Mercury herbs, and Jupiter herbs because these are the planetary influencers that are resonant heavily, not the only ones, but some of them as we mentioned at the beginning, as well as some of the astrological energies that are going on right now, okay? So Gemini herbs include black seed, lavender, skullcap, vervain, and yarrow. Mercury herbs include dill, fennel, lavender, majorum, mint, parsley, caraway, Fenugreek. Jupiter herbs include honeysuckle, hyssop, anise, dandelion, mint, nutmeg, sage, and clover. So all of these herbs actually have really powerful properties on their own, but right now utilizing the laws of correspondence, we're going to use the ones that are most powerful for this time's astrological energy. Okay, so moving forward, here's an activity that I would like for you guys to do with me. Um, you don't have to do it right now, but it would be a good thing to do over the next couple of days, utilizing this energy. And you can actually do this at any time 
or anytime there may be a full moon um, in Gemini, um, which normally happens once a year. Um, you can also do this for swapping out the planetary herbs or swapping out the uh, correspondence uh, score of corresponding herbs as well as crystals, okay? So I want you guys to make your own full moon mojo bags and I want you to use the following herbs to create a simple mojo bag. And a mojo bag is a little bag filled with charmed herbs or crystals and magical oils. A mojo bag can be used for a variety of things but is normally carried on the person as a charm in their pocket, shoe, or purse. And the full moon is the perfect time to create a mojo bag and let it charge on an altar until the new moon or, the full, or for a full moon cycle. So what I mean by that is full moon to full moon. So that entire lunar cycle, um, it's a great thing to let your things charge for entire lunar cycles if you can or more on altars when you're charging things. All right, so I want you to use some of or all of the following herbs. It's up to you what you have available. We have mint, lavender, sage, clove, and parsley. And the reason why I chose these specific herbs is because of their properties as well as their correspondences, it's really going to be powerful to not only utilize for this particular astrological time period, but it's also going to be key because it will assist you all in creating some powerful magic inside of manifestation, inside of breaking cycles, inside of releasing negative energy around communication and opening up opportunities and drawing them in for you. So as well as protection and all of that wonderful stuff as well. So these herbs are really powerful herbs. So I recommend you using them even if you don't particularly use them during this time right now. And again, you can use all of these herbs or some of these herbs. You don't have to, you know, <laughs> gather all of them. They're pretty easy to find. You can find like parsley and sage and clove at the grocery store. Um, you can also find mint too, depending on what grocery store, grocery store you kind of go to. Um, but yeah, so all of that information is there as well. If you guys are unfamiliar with how to create your own mojo bag, go on over to our YouTube channel, which is uh, Gemini Holistics, G-E-M-I-N-E-Y-E -E Holistics, and you subscribe to that channel and peruse the, the last um, video that was posted is how to make your own full moon uh, mojo bag and it's also posted inside of this group if you're part of our full moon group it's posted here as well so you guys have access it access to it there as well so if you guys have any questions about anything you guys can always ask these questions um, down below in the chat that is open all right and or you have questions or comments, you know, feel free to like it, like this video. And this video will also be available on the YouTube channel um, at our YouTube channel, GeminiHolistics.com. It'll be uploaded there as well. So if you guys are viewing it on YouTube, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, okay? As also hit the notifications bell so you guys are notified when we upload new content, all right? So, if any of you guys are interested in becoming a magical herbalist, because a lot of this presentation was around magical herbalism, um, you can definitely, definitely check out our magical herbalist course, which course, which is the Holistic Kitchen Witch Program, and it's a five-week course. We're already um, moving through some of the content now, but there's a special sale going on until Monday. For those of you who want to uh, view it 
and get into more of the details, make sure you go on over to GeminiHolistics.com, G-E-M-I-N-E-Y-E Holistics.com. Use the code ELGB99 for 50% off that course. Okay. All right. So I have a full moon reading for you guys that I want to share with you all. As I pull these cards for you, and based around what the energy is and what spirit has to say for us. And the cards are up in front of you guys on the screen, on the pre presentation screen. If you guys can see that, I'll post this photo specifically into the group as well so you guys can get a better picture of what's going on. So we can leave you guys with a sense of what spirit is guiding you into over this next couple of weeks, what this next cycle has to entail for you guys until the rest of this lunar cycle has to entail for you guys, as well as the astrological energies and how they're affecting us, okay? So the energy that comes up in our near past position is the card love. And for those who don't know, I'm using my dreams of Gaia tarot deck, if you're wondering. So this particular card is a very interesting card. It's in our near past position, and it indicates some of the energies that have been going on recently. One of the biggest things that sticks out to me about this card is the fact that we just came out of Mercury, I mean, excuse me, Venus in retrograde. So Venus has been retrograding the past month and some change in the signs of Scorpio and Libra. Um, Libra is ruled planetarily by Venus. So that was an intense energy that was pushing us to explore the depths of our emotional relationships and how we related to others. And this card is a direct symbolism of that energy and the events that have transpired over that time. So really, it's asking us to explore how our past relationships, as well as romantic, family, whatever, all of the emotional relationships that we have has affected our energy in the present. Um, it also encourages us to ask some important questions like, are you holding on to love that has served its purpose? Are you holding on to relationships that no longer serve you? Um, are you realizing you have made mistakes by walking away from relationships that you may have wished that you were able to keep? There may be regret around those energies. Whatever it is, is exploring as it pushing us to explore the energies around how we feel about relationships, how we feel about things. If you have noticed over the past couple of weeks, you might have been feeling a little nostalgic for past relationships, or you might have it might have been hard for you to push through in releasing certain relationships that you know you needed to release. Different energies like that. Also, of course, the holiday was um, in the middle of the week, and that can always bring up emotions, positive or negative, around relationships. So this card is really encouraging us to not neglect or ignore that important, valuable part of ourselves that's asking us to understand how our relationships affect us, as well as make a choice to making a choice to move forward in spite of any negative attachments and sometimes even positive attachments that are just outgrown us, you know? So it's really about releasing that energy so that we can better love ourselves, better love, you know, in the future. So if we're holding on to a lot of these old emotions, these old stagnant things, how are we going to move forward into where we need to go? So this is the card that comes up in our near past position. It's really encouraging our energies to release and transform based off of that old hard space. What, how can you let these energies go? How can you release them? How can you move forward? And how can you allow 
new experiences to come into our lives and emotionally feed us in new ways. Okay. So the next card that comes up is our present card, which is faith, okay, in this deck. And this card is upright, okay, and it's in the present position. So there's a couple of things about this card that are very, very powerful. So some powerful symbolism, as it is with most of these cards, about transformation, really understanding ourselves, utilizing our paths and our spiritual energies to propel us forward into higher ideas of consciousness, okay? So this card is imploring us to stop questioning our paths and also to learn to trust that we are exactly where we need to be, okay? So if you're feeling a, like a sense of contention or a sense of like, I'm not where I need to go, this is not where I plan to be at this particular time, oh my God, this entire year is almost over. <laughs> Have I gotten things done the way that I need to get them done? All of those types of judgments. So what this card is saying to you is trust where you are in the moment. Don't allow your mind to get ahead of the moment. Don't allow anxiety to set in on those particular types of things. Really allow yourself to have faith that things are going to turn out. Because honestly, the way this, set, this spread is set up right now, a lot of people have anxiety. I'm just going to be honest. You're, a lot of people are unsure about how things are going to be going throughout this year, the new year coming up. A lot of people are unsure of their paths. They don't know if they're on the right path right now. And Spirit is really coming in with a reinforcing message of allow the energy to be what it is. Have faith that you're going to move forward. It's okay to take a break right now. It's okay to not know every single last detail of everything that's fine. Spirit's supporting you through this time. Spirit's here. Spirit got you, okay? So don't allow yourself to feel like, oh my God. And then also to, this is a specific message for somebody. Spirit is saying where you were is not where you're going. So you really need to release that negative energy around, you know, I am scared that this situation is going to repeat itself. You really have to let that energy go. Spirit is saying, I'm supporting you into a new level. But if you're resisting me by not believing or having that faith that you need to have inside of, you know, what, how your spirit guides, your ancestors, or whatever you believe in spiritually is moving you to the next level, then it's going to cause some contention in how you manifest things. So <clears throat> trusting your dreams, trust that your future goals are what they need to be. A lot of you are focusing and realigning on your goals, which is common around this time of year. A lot of people start to reevaluate what they want to do over the next year that's coming up. 2019 is vastly approaching. And a lot of people are focusing in on what their goals are, what their dreams are, how they can accomplish these things, how they can manifest them. Trust in your dreams. Trust in the vision that spirit's given to you. Trust in that, and, and it will manifest the way that it needs to, okay? And believe that you're on the right path for you. You're not on this path for anybody else, but you, darling, and your experiences are what matter, so release anybody else's judgments around it, okay? So that's the present card. The near future card that's coming up is Journey Inverted. Okay, another really interesting card um, as it pertains to this reading as well as it pertains to the overall energies of this time. And it's introverted. So just like that love card kind of represents some of the retrograde energy that was going on with Venus, I feel that this card is going to be a foreshadowing of the potential potential energies that are coming up within the Mercury, uh, Mercury retrograde. Mercury rules over short distance travel. Um, it also rules over thought 
technology, stuff like that. So it has that mercurial energy to it of journeying traveler. Um, it also, if you notice this card, I don't know if you guys can see it because it is inverted, but there's a dualistic nature to this card. You have um, the energy of two paths being shown on this card. One path is a light path, the other path, path is the dark path. And both of these energies are merging together as one being. And this is the journey. And they're at a convergence where their journey begins. Okay. So this is also an energy of Gemini, an energy of Mercury. Um, and you even have some Piscean influence in this card because there are two fishes at the top of it. It's a lot of interesting symbolism in the card. So introverted in the near future. So what I really want you guys to focus on back to what the faith card was saying and mirroring that is lack of faith is going to interfere with your future goals and plans. I really need you guys to understand that. So right now, in the, as you're manifesting, because it's a full moon energy right now, whatever you're thinking is being amplified. Your thoughts are being amplified. So you're lacking that faith or that positive thought process around the things that you want to get done right now that is going to manifest and it doesn't mean that the things are going to always work out the exact way that you wanted them to but that doesn't mean that they can't okay um and that they won't in the future so be aware of the lessons that you've learned from your past rather than just focusing on the challenges so in every opera, every challenge that we go through, we have the opportunity to not only look at the bless the lesson, but we can also look at the blessing. Okay, so there's something that we've learned or we've gained from these trials. What is it? Focus on that. What you've learned from the energies that have come up over the past few months, the past few weeks. Reflect on that. Allow those energies to become come to the forefront because sometimes when we're busy and we're on our journey, okay, notice journey's inverted. So this could also mean in the future some rest time is going to be coming up for a lot of you. You may be getting some time off from work due to the holidays or different things of that nature. Some of you just may have more time to go inside of yourself. And I know in the colder climates in the country, a lot of people are going to be more indoors because it's cold. So it's going to be a lot of a lot less of going out. So there's going to be more time to reflect inwardly. And I feel like Spirit is saying embrace that rest because this is time for you to review a lot of the different energies that have gone on in the past couple of months, unpacking that energy, processing that energy, and moving that energy forward. So also another energy that is coming up and that spirit wants to share with you guys around this card is to release the fear of reliving that past pain and i kind of went into that already it's really reinforcing you to stop manifesting in the inverse okay and i always say that stop manifesting in the inverse if any of you have done any spiritual work with me you all know what i'm talking about there is a tendency that some powerful beings have when they think negatively, they think that they're not manifesting, but the truth is that they're manifesting from their negative programming that's stuck in their subconscious mind. So take these next couple of weeks to really vet out what your programming is, where your thought processes are, because the energy is here to help you heal that. And that brings us into our bonus message, which is healing, okay? Don't be afraid to heal. Allow the beautiful process of healing to fully play itself out and release the need to feel connected to all senses of being okay. If you're not okay, it's okay to not be okay. We're all human. We all go through different trials and tribulations. We all go through different issues. We all go through different tests. It's okay to not be okay, okay? And it is natural to need help and, to, and it's a more beautiful to receive that help that you need and move forward in that process. So some of you may need to focus on your physical health, others of you on your mental health, some of you on your emotional health, but whatever that is, 
that energy is coming up and there. And as we go and move into our future aspects, it's going to be really important that you guys take that into accountability because spirit's really pushing a lot of you to do some inner healing work and to really reveal some things about yourselves to yourselves and move forward into this new energy that we're going through as we wrap up the Gregorian calendar and move into the next year of 2019. All right, so <laughs> that is a full moon for energy reading for Gemini, full moon, November 2018 for you guys. Um, and thank you so much for everybody who tuned in live. Thank you so much for everybody who's tuning in in the recording that's posted on our Facebook. Again, like I said, feel free to invite people into our Facebook group. I'll have that information posted below. If you guys are viewing this on YouTube, I'll have all that information posted below so you guys can join us on Facebook if you so feel inclined. Also, I'll be uploading um, the PDF form of this presentation for you guys, and this will be in the group for the remainder of time. <laughs> so it'll always be here as an archive video. You guys can come back, reflect on it, as well as, again, like I said, it'll be on our YouTube on Gemini Holistics on YouTube as well. So hopefully all this energy was insightful for you guys. If it was, make sure to give this a thumbs up, like it, heart it, you know, comment about how it has helped you. And if you guys want to see more stuff like this, please continue to support this full moon group as we move forward. We need more volunteers. So if you're a healer and somebody who will, or somebody who would just like to present on the energies of the moon, definitely let me know. Um, I'd love to have you involved in presenting as we move forward. We need more volunteers on that end. So definitely let us know. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I'm so glad you guys enjoyed this information. And make sure you guys go on over to Facebook.com slash Gemini, G-E-M-I-N-E-Y-E, Holistics, and make sure you like us there. Make sure you go on over um, to our website and GeminiHolistics.com. Until Monday, we're having a Black Friday sale. Everything is 50% off with code ELGB99 on crystals, readings, herbs, Reiki, everything is over there, 50% off. So if you guys want to book a personal reading with me or you guys want to purchase some herbs or different things of that nature, definitely go on over to Gemini, G-E-M-I-N-E-Y-E, holistics.com and check us out there as well. Link to that will be in the description box below. All right, you guys, peace and blessings. It was an honor to spend this time with you. Bye-bye.